Now to the ABC News investigation into the deadly ambush of four American Green Berets killed by ISIS in Niger. Grieving families say the Pentagon betrayed them after military investigators suggested the soldiers went on a rogue mission in 2017. But what really happened? Here's ABC's senior foreign correspondent, Ian Panel. I'm Ian Panel in the West African country of Niger. We're on the fringes of the Sahara here, as you can see. The landscape is pretty desolate. Now, the reason we're here is because we've been conducting an investigation into the murder of four American soldiers in October 2017. The decisions that were made, the mistakes that were made that led to their deaths. There have been Pentagon investigations into what happened that day, but no senior officer has been held accountable for the decisions that were made for the tragedy that happened in October the 4th, 2017. We learned overnight that at least three U.S. Special Forces were killed in an ambush in the African country of Niger. The names of the American Special Forces soldiers is being withheld subject to next of kin notifications. Killed in action was Sergeant Le David Johnson, Sergeant First Class Jeremiah Johnson, Staff Sergeant Brian Black and Staff Sergeant Dustin Wright. ABC News has been investigating. We asked what exactly went wrong. Why did these four men lose their lives and no one would give us an answer? For years, the families at the center of this tragedy searched for answers. The tale given to them by the Pentagon was fractured, including a shocking accusation the team was on a rogue mission to kill or capture a top ISIS commander. Military officials at first told Maisha Johnson that her husband, Le David, was MIA. They tell me, um, that they was in um, a, a rapid gunfight. And as of October 4th, um, Sergeant LaDavid Johnson's whereabouts is unknown. I asked him, I said, what you mean unknown? Like, you can't find him? You don't know where he at? They told me no. After that, I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't do anything. I'm just sitting here wondering about where's my husband here? And they gonna find him. That's what I'm saying to myself. They gonna find him, they gonna find him. Then I get a call saying that um, they have an American soldier and they're willing to do a trade or something like that. For who? They didn't say for who. They just said they're willing to do a trade. In my mind, they still didn't find my husband. I don't know what's going on. So any little thing that somebody tells me, I'm thinking, could this be my husband? Could this be my husband? If I could go back and figure out who gave him that first report. Like, took out of him. I mean, it's just, it's egregious that somebody would share that un, unconfirmed report with them and unconscionable that the family would be given conflicting statements. I didn't hear anything else until my casualty assistance officer came to my home October 6th. And he told me, as of October 6th, Sergeant Johnson went from missing the action to KIA. Everybody went bananas. I was screaming and crying. And my mother-in-law was throwing um, glasses and screaming and crying. She's falling on the floor, just throwing things. The Pentagon's Africa Command does not know for sure if this American soldier was wounded and alive on the battlefield, and if he was even for a brief time in ISIS hands. Did that phone call, the re memory of that, sort of leave you with lingering doubt about whether Le David was captured? And today, do you think he was captured, or have you been convinced that he died fighting? At that moment, yes, I believe that I felt that my husband was captured. This is a serious incident, very little information being publicly offered by the U.S. military. The families of the other three Special Forces members were also starting to doubt official accounts. Suspicions grew as Pentagon officials accused the team of trying to kill a senior ISIS commander without getting necessary approval.
The investigation also found the team inaccurately portrayed the concept of operations for the first of three total missions on 3 and 4 October. If I were to summarize the report in one sentence, it said that the ODA was ill-prepared and conducting an unauthorized mission. Not only did General Waldhauser suggest that ODA 3212 was relatively incompetent, he went on to claim that this team of Green Berets left base under false pretenses to try to capture or kill one of the most dangerous terrorists in the region, a man named Dundu Shefu. In effect, he accused the team of going on a rogue mission for the ISIS commander's scalp. The Pentagon investigation found the team's commanders, two captains, mischaracterized the initial mission, claiming it was less dangerous than it really was. Thank you for joining us today in remembrance of our fallen brothers. My name is Colonel Brad Moses. I'm the third group commander. On 4 October, Team Wellam and their Nigerian partners were attacked by an enemy that didn't want them to make this small spot in the world a better place. Just stuff that they said didn't add up at all. Everybody came telling me different things. First day, um, Moses came to my auntie house, sat on the couch saying that my husband um, was on the back of the truck shooting a machine rifle. They hit a tree, he flew off. Then he said he was the one driving the truck. So which one was it? Did he hit the tree and flew off or was he driving the truck? Everybody was just saying anything because they know that mission went horribly wrong. And it was gonna be a lot of fingers to point and to blame. The ODA caught in a near ambush, made a decision to plant their feet and fight. Colonel Moses refused to do an on-camera interview, but he denied to me on the phone that he ever gave conflicting information to the Johnson family regarding Le David's death. However, the first and most consistent thing I was told by all the family members was that they too had received dubious or conflicting information from the military. The immediate report was that he had been killed in combat and it had been by mortar fire. Mortar fire was the explanation for his death. You know, I didn't have any reason to think otherwise, but I viewed his body. I served for seven years and saw my share and what a mortar does to the human body, shrapnel and fire is a lot different and is much more graphic and, and sinister than small arms fire. And he was not charred flesh. He was a man who had stood his ground and fallen by small arms fire bullets riddling his body. So the autopsy report was where it really started clicking that something didn't add up. I had a gut feeling when I heard all this from the very beginning that something wasn't right. Whistleblowers told ABC News that not only had the families been falsely told the team went on a rogue manhunt, Pentagon officials didn't tell them the ground commander had tried twice to stop the team's missions because they weren't properly armed or equipped to confront an ISIS commander they were trying to locate. And that's the only damn thing I asked them to do from the very beginning. Just tell me the truth. I'm angry, and I'm still angry to this day. Happy birthday. Myesha Johnson was pregnant at the time of her husband's death. She now raises the couple's three children as a single mom. They still ask questions every day. Go. Mommy, when daddy coming home? When daddy coming home? And I have to tell him, daddy not coming home, you know, daddy in heaven now, you know. So, you know, you can see daddy in your dreams. And when I'm dead and gone, I'm going to reunite with my husband. He's going to be waiting for me. Still so many questions. Our thanks to Ian Panel for that. And for much more on this investigation, be sure to watch 3212 Unredacted, an ambush in Africa, the Pentagon's betrayal, which is now streaming on Hulu.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.